Alrighty guys, well, welcome to the video. So today what I wanted to do is go over an interesting topic that I didn't actually realize is missing from a lot of different Ethernet drivers and has been missing from them for a significant period of time and in most cases appears to actually be disabled either intentionally or unintentionally. And But this feature is extremely important for your performance when it comes to your networking. And that feature is called RSS or receive side scaling. And if we take a look at this documentation from Microsoft, receive side scaling is basically a performance improvement by reducing processing delay and optimizing CPU utilization across the system by spreading out your networking packets to different CPU cores. And you can kind of imagine where this can become instantly useful because if you're again using just four zero for all of your interrupts, having interrupt moderation, which we've already covered, it reduces latency in a lot of cases and improves bandwidth for some people even. Well, if you have way more interrupts, then having no ability to scale them out to multiple cores is going to cause even more issues for some people. So this is where I realized that this is an interesting feature that is actually hidden and is not for some reason actually enabled on pretty much any driver going back since 2019. Uh, as far as I can tell, which is a pretty long time ago. And so basically here's the tests that I ran. And so there's gonna be a bright screen warning here. So in case you need to close your eyes. Okay, so running Lightning Spawn or any sort of other actual interrupt testing software, you'll notice that NDIS or your network driver interface is actually registering all of its interrupts on core zero. And you'll notice it because especially if you disable interrupt moderation and run a network test, it causes a huge amount of interrupts. So that's a quick and easy way to tell. And it will usually not even be remotely close to any other sort of device or software or driver. And so what I noticed is that in my base driver from all the way back in 2019, so I'm wondering Windows 11, but this driver has been in there for that long that it's the default whenever you install Windows on any version so far. And you'll notice that RSS is mentioned, but you'll notice that for some reason it's not actually working, even though the default is enabled to one. And if we go and take a look at this next picture, even when I download and run the latest drivers from Intel on my motherboard website or from directly on Intel's website, none of them have the actual RSS feature anywhere inside of the actual registry where they're supposed to be. And you guys can follow this path too, but yours might be slightly different. Yours might be a 000 or a 001. Just depends. You just have to look up your actual network adapter's name and it will tell you what it actually is. And so that was the huge issue is that why is this disabled? Because this is a super useful feature and this is a feature that you would definitely want to have to reduce latency basically across the board when it came to processing everything. And so what I noticed is that this is not just me going crazy here, but you'll notice that even on Intel's white papers here, they mentioned that the I-225 drivers and networking actual devices all support it. And they even mention it inside of there as a huge performance boosting feature to have. And so that's where this got really confusing. But that's why I made this video. Because when we go and look at a couple of different other devices from Intel that are also networking related, so different versions. This applies to even the I-226 drivers or devices, which are much older and much newer than what I have. And so the problem is, is that it seems like Intel on the mainstream desktop has just kept this disabled. And so a lot of very helpful people online have noticed that as long as you have the correct actual registry edits applied into the registry for that certain adapter, you can enable it and do it in a creative way that doesn't involve doing any sort of super risky or super sketchy stuff. So how can you do and how can you check if you actually have RSS actually enabled or if you have the feature even listed as a feature in your processor? Because maybe you have it in there, but it just doesn't list anything. So if you run this command, get net adapter advanced properties, and you just do ethernet because it's usually the first one for most people, you'll notice that it will print out a bunch of different features. Now, here's the problem. Right now I have it enabled on mine because I have natively installed it already after doing all of the manual edits. 
but yours, you may not see the most important ones, which are load balancing profile, received size scaling as an option to even enable, and the actual amount of queues that you can use. And so what we need to do is you download this actual registry editor and you need to modify it to slightly specialize for your computer. But here's what it is. These are the registry edits. And the way that it's set up is that if you want to pick a specific set of cores, you need to make sure that you list them inside of this actual set right here. So what this means is the base processor is the first core that it's going to use before it starts to scale up to more cores. So you can kind of think of it as like setting the actual interrupt affinity for the device. And then sometimes you'll want to have this extra one right here. So I just re recommend adding both of them just because it depends on which driver version and if it's slightly different for you. And then max processor number is going to actually be the listed part of where it either stops or where it keeps scaling. So for example, if I set this to 24 or to 26, it will scale all the way up to 26 or 28 or whatever I set it to. But here's the important part. It skips every other core. So if I go into my interrupts, for example, with any sort of device to check, and I go to specified processors, RSS does not use hyperthreads at all. It skips them when it considers using an extra core. And this is not something as far as I'm aware that can be adjusted, tweaked, or modified. It always uses real physical cores. And those will always be your even cores usually. I've never seen that not apply. So that's how you can tell really quickly. Because if you run this actual command, you might see what's called a indirection table, which is a fancy term for basically the actual way the system sees what you're actually changing. And so what we're going to do is we're going to run that command again, but we're going to do this part, get net adapter RSS. We're not checking for all the features just for the RSS, because in that white paper I showed you guys, you'll mention how they have this thing called an indirection table. It's basically the guide for the actual processor to understand what cores to use and where. So if we run it, yours may slightly bug out, mine's a little bit, but what you probably will end up seeing is a bunch of zeros and a bunch of different cores listed, but it's not actually required for the actual adapter to work. In my case, it might be for yours. You can look up what it looks like online, but it's different for everybody. But the main things you'll want to see are number of receive queues has to match the actual amount of receive queues or RSS cores that it can defer onto. So mine is maxed out at four. I can't set it any higher. I can't modify it to six or eight. If I do, it reverts back to one. You'll want to make sure that that also your base core is set and your actual max processor is set. So I have it set on the last few cores of my system. So 24, 26, 28, 30, and 32, because that's up to five. Sometimes it will skip over one for some reason. And that's really all you have to do to check to make sure that you have it. And if you don't, then you probably should uh, enable this because it's super useful for keeping the work spread across your system rather than just on one core, which never really made sense to me in the terms of many different ways of setting up your system. So if you go and run this command, once you do, you go into the registry, check to make sure that everything is actually correctly applied inside here. And then if you need to enable it for whatever reason to check to see or disable it, you'll want to go and disable this first after applying the registry edit because that resets it and restarts the actual driver. Otherwise, it won't just apply immediately as soon as you enable the registry edit. So once you disable it and then re-enable it, go into advanced and then go and check down near the very bottom. You'll see the actual options load in if you actually have it or if it's the right way it's named in your driver, which it seems like it's a standard actual defined name for the actual driver feature of RSS. And you'll want to make sure that it's the max setting. So mine's four. You want to make sure that the actual enablement of it is turned on and the profile you can use is any one of these. I just do NUMA scaling because it tends to use the most cores the quickest and the most often. You don't have to. You can experiment to see if it works better for you. But that's why I wanted to show it is because on the later drivers, we don't even get RSS queues anymore. We are originally in the first driver at least had RSS queues that we could pull up and look at. 
but now we don't even get that. So that's a huge problem is that we don't even get the ability to change that feature. And it's a pretty unique and useful feature to have, especially for the system. And so then finally after doing my testing, here's what it looks like if you actually have done it correctly. So rather than interrupting on core zero or whatever random core that it decides to pick, instead it will use your actual correct cores. If we go over to here, this is with the actual improvements applied and with the changes set in the registry. You'll notice that it starts on core 24, it skips each other core, and it's way, way less amount of interrupts in general. We went from about 600,000 to about 500,000. So not only did we lower our latency by just a little bit, it's not going to be crazy, but we are saving a lot of time and spreading out the work. So that way one core isn't just being completely hammered, which will ruin your performance and your latency in a lot of cases. So now that you know how all of that works, I did want to leave a disclaimer here because there's not exactly a clear reason online as to why this is actually disabled. The best explanation that I can find online is that there is a small fractional chance that yours will have obvious immediate issues, like won't even be able to load a web page. And it seems like it's a very, very small percentage, small enough to where obviously it's irrelevant to 99% of you. But there might be a very edge knees case where some person with some driver or some motherboard Ethernet chip will not have a perfectly functioning system. But I feel like we should be able to change that for ourselves and not be actually forced out of this feature because it's a super useful feature to have. And so, yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully this has actually been educational and informative. I'll post a link to all of the actual registry edits in the comments and in the description of this video. And I'll make sure that everything is set up for that. And if you have any questions or you are curious about this or have any other information you wanted to bring forward, feel free. And I'll continue to find interesting stuff like this for you guys. My name is Savaterix and I'm out.